マーク・バークラー博士はクリスチャン・リーダーシップ大学の創設者であり神様の声に関する革命的な教えでよく知られています1972年以来精霊様との親密な関係について世界中で教えてこられました「神様の声を聞く方法」と題するこのコースでは聖書的な幻とジャーナルを利用し神様から来る思いを見極め明確にする方法を学びます生ける神様との対話の中で毎日を歩んでいきましょう。これはセッション三です。タイトルは。霊的な親密さ、神様の心の願いです。We want to welcome you to another session of how to hear God's voice。ようこそ、神様の声の聞き方のセッション三へ。It's amazing to me the passion that God has to talk to us. 神様は語りたくて仕方がないようです。私はジャーナルを始めて何週間かは毎日それを行いました。And then I found my life got a little bit busy. 少し忙しくなって。何日かジャーナルをつけない日が続くと、主は言われるのでした。マーク、私との時間を持ちなさい。一日の最も大切な時間は私から聞く時間だ。神様の方から私と時間を過ごしたいと頼んでくるのでした。神様に言われて、創世記から黙示録まで読みました。神様の子らが神様の声を聞くことが神様の願いだと分かりました。私が歩いた道を皆さんも歩いてください。私がエデンの園のアダムとエヴァについて読んでいると神様は言われました私が最初にアダムとエヴァに与えた計画を見よう私は涼しい時間に彼らと歩いて話をしたと。彼らは毎日朝と夕方に神様と話をしていたのです。彼らが神様に話すだけでなく、神様も語られたことでしょう。それが神様の意図であり、願いなのです。神様は毎日話がしたいのです。It's amazing how many people don't believe that. 多くの人がこれを信じようとしません。神様は聖書を書かれた時点で話をやめたというのです。そして神様は時々ご自分の臨在と声を引っ込めてしまうという人もいます。しかし私は神様の声が聞けるようになりました。過去30年間、毎日神様の声を聞いてきました。ですから神様がご臨座を引っ込めてしまうとは思えません。He sent Jesus to die on the cross to restore a relationship with us. So then Adam and Eve sinned, and the communication with God was broken. And then God said, I want to restore it. 神様は言われました。私はこれを回復したい。He said, I can't accept the fact that I can't talk to my children. 自分の子供たちと話せないなんて耐えられない。So I'd like you to turn in your Bibles to Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 23. さて、ここで、新明記5章23節を開いてください。Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 23. 新明記5章23節では、
And it recounts the story of how God tries to restore his voice to his children. He enters into a covenant with them. He said, I'm going to be your God, you're going to be my people. And he said, I'm going to restore my voice. And he takes him to Mount Sinai where he begins to speak to them. And Moses is recounting what happened when God did this. In verse 23, he says this. When you Israelites heard the voice of God from the midst of the darkness while the mountain was burning with fire, you came near to me, all the heads of your tribes and your elders. And you said, Behold, the Lord our God has shown us his glory and his greatness, and we have heard his voice from the midst of the fire as... Uh, And we have seen today that God speaks with man, and yet man can live. For then, why should we die? For this great fire will consume us if we hear the voice of the Lord our God any longer, then we shall die. For who is there in all of flesh who has heard the voice of the living God speaking from the midst of the fire as we have and lived? So God is offering His voice to His children. And with His voice comes something called fire. And they say, if we hear His voice, it's going to bring us into a death process. We're going to die to ourselves. Die to our own flesh. And what's going to happen is they're going to come alive to the Holy Spirit. But they don't want to go through a death process. They say, God, there's way too much heat here. And so they have a suggestion. And it's found in verse 27. They say, Moses, how about if you go near and you can hear what the Lord your God says and you can tell us about it. Now with friends like that, you don't really need to have enemies. Because they're saying, we don't want to be burned by the fire. But Moses, we don't mind if you get burned by the fire. So why don't you go and why don't you die to the flesh? And you can come back and tell us about the experience. What they're really doing is they're turning God down. They're saying, I don't want a relationship with you. I don't want to hear your voice. Now, if I was a parent and my child said, I don't want to hear your voice, Dad. As a parent, I'd be broken-hearted. I'd be broken-hearted. And I think God is broken hearted. Because he wants a relationship with his children. He, he's trying to restore his voice to his children. And they're saying too much heat. So what's the response? Verse 30. You go and say to them, return to your tents. Verse 30. But as for you, Moses, you can stand here by me, and I will speak to you all the commandments, the statutes, the judgments, 
that you shall teach them that they may observe them in the land I will give them to possess. しかし、あなたは私と共にここにとどまれ、私はあなたが彼らに教えるすべての命令、おきてと定めをあなたに告げよう。彼らは私が与えて所有させようとしているその地でそれを行うのだ。God is saying, It is not fair for you to ask me not to talk. And I'm going to speak. And if you don't want to hear my voice, you can go back to your tent. But Moses, if you're willing to hear my voice, then you stay here next to me. So Moses got a relationship. So Moses got a relationship with God. そこでモーセは神様との関係を選びました。He heard God's voice. 神様の声を聞いたんです。And the Israelites, instead of a relationship, they got a bunch of laws. イスラエルの民は関係の代わりに立法を得ました。They got laws, statutes, commandments, and the end of the law is death. 立法、規則、今しめを得たのです。そして、立法は死をもたらします。私たちは毎朝起きたとき、そうすることを選ぶことができます。We can say, Good morning, Lord. I'm glad you're here. Can we chat? こう言えるんです。主よ、おはようございます。ここにいてくださって感謝です。少しおしゃべりしませんか What do you want to say to me today? 今日私に何を言われたいですか And he'll give you some instruction for the day. 神様はその日のためになることを教えてくれるでしょう。そうしたくなければ、あなたにあるのは立法や and statutes and commandments. 規則や戒めです。And you can say, well, let me see. There's about five things I should do to make God happy today. So let me go do those things, and I'm going to hope He's going to be happy. God said, I did not create you to live out of laws. I created you to live out of a relationship with me. To live out of my voice. Because when I try to live out of law, I feel guilt, condemnation, and death. And for 10 years as a Christian, I couldn't hear God's voice, so I just lived in condemnation all the time. And when I learned to hear his voice, God freed me from condemnation. He told me lots of things which I did not have to do. They were religious things that I was doing because I thought they would make God happy. He said, No, I just want to spend time talking to you. And so he freed me from religion and brought me into a relationship with himself. And he will do Do that with, with you also as you hear his voice on a daily basis. Now there's a verse that we skip, so let's go back to it. It's verse 28. The Lord heard the voice of your words which you spoke to me, and the Lord said to me, I've heard the voice of the words of this people which they've spoken to me. They have done well in all they have spoken. Well, that sounds like God was happy in what they said. Because they just turned God's voice down and He says, You did well in what you said. But let's read verse 29. You're going to see an ache in his heart. He said, Oh, that they had such a heart in them, that they would fear me, that they would keep my commandments always, that it would be well for them and their sons forever. He's, he's, he's in agony. 神様は苦悩しておられます
He's saying, I wish this could work. But I know it can't work. Because they can't keep these laws. The purpose of the law is a tutor to take us to Christ. And another purpose of the law is to teach us we can't keep it. There's none righteous. We're all shut up in unrighteousness. So there's no way the law could make me righteous. But they didn't know that. So he said, okay, give it a try. It's good that you give it a try. Because by giving it a try, you're going to realize it can't work. It doesn't work. And once you realize it don't work, doesn't work, then you can come, then you can come to Jesus Christ. And then you can come back to a relationship with me. Alright, so then we move on to David, King David. King David is a man after God's own heart. God says, look at what this guy is doing. He is doing what I want. And what he's doing is he's dialoguing with God on a daily basis. He journals out 150 of his prayer sessions. He goes to God, he hears what God is saying, and he writes it down. He has dialogue with God. God said, a man after my heart. So even though the nation as a whole turned God down, David reached out and got what God offered. And then we come to Jesus. And Jesus said, I only do those things which I hear and see the Father doing. And he said, this is eternal life that you would know him. And that word for know is an intimate word for a husband knowing their wife. And they would bear a child. And Jesus said, eternal life is knowing God intimately. It, it's hearing his voice within you. And it births something within you. It births faith and hope and love. And joy and peace. He said, this is what it's about. Now, Mary and Martha were two ladies who showed their love to Jesus in two different ways. Jesus shows up unexpectedly at the door of their house. Can you picture the scene? Martha opens the door and says, Oh, it's Jesus! And she slams the door in his face. And she runs around and picks the entire house up. And she gets it all organized. And then she opens the door and invites him in. That's what Martha's doing. She is rushing around serving the king. Now Mary's not doing that. She is sitting at his feet, gazing into his eyes, and enjoying words of love. And Martha says, Mary bothers me. Would you tell her to get to work? We're not in heaven. We're on earth. We have stuff to do. 
In heaven we can chat. But now we gotta get people saved. And Jesus said, Martha, Martha, you're worried and troubled about so many things. But really only one thing is important. And that's what Mary chose. So what did Mary choose? She chose fellowship. And Jesus said, that's the only thing that's important? And I said, really? He said, well, other things are important too. But in relationship to knowing God, this is the only important thing. Knowing God is so much more important than everything else, it's like this is the only thing that counts. So God is constantly saying, I want someone who will hear my voice. And what we keep giving him back is people who will keep his laws. And be his servant. He said, I'd like you to be more than my servant. I'd like you to be my friend. To the disciples, he said, no longer do I call you servants, I now call you friends. So Paul was a man who did it right. In Philippians 3.10, Paul says this. He said, Oh, that I might know him. And the power of his resurrection that lifts me. Alright, so that word know is ginosko. Alright, so he's saying, oh, I just want to be intimate with God. And because of that, God was able to lead him on his missionary journeys. It was the Holy Spirit that forbid him to go to Bithynia and Asia. It was a dream at night of a Macedonian man motioning that led him over to Macedonia. He was being led on his missionary trip by the voice of God. By dreams and by visions. And in my early Christian life, that's not what motivated me. I said, there's a need, there's people who need to get saved, let's go get them saved. I remember going door-to-door -door witnessing in my community. This is before I'd learned to hear God's voice. I was just doing it because there was a law that said you're supposed to go and disciple. And I went and knocked on this one man's door. He was so rough, gruff, and so mean, I thought he was going to bite my head off. And he said, what do you want? I said, nothing, nothing, I just backed away. I said, God, that was close. He was really mean. So I decided no more door-to-door -door witnessing. Then a few months later, after I'd learned to hear God's voice, God, God said, I want you to go back to that man's house and knock on his door again. I said, God, that's not a good idea. I said, I almost got killed last time I did that. He said, well, go do it anyway. So I'm learning how to live out of God's voice. So I said, decided to try it. And when that man opened the door, here's what he said. He was heartbroken and he said, have you seen my family? And I said, what do you mean? He, 
He said, I came home today from work and the closets were empty and my whole family had left. That man was broken hearted and tender. And I told him I would help him find his family. And I did. And I counseled them. And I was able to lead both of them to the Lord. And they came to our church. And they got baptized. So now it's being led by the Holy Spirit as to where to go and who to talk to. And that's what Paul did. He was led by the Spirit on his missionary journey. The difference between living out of law and living in the Spirit. Now let's come back and talk about us. Would you turn your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 18? Hebrews chapter 12, verse 18. God says, You and I, we've not come to a mountain that can be touched and to a burning fire and to darkness and gloom and a whirlwind. Now he's referring back to Mount Sinai. And God says, Church, I'm not going to bring you back to Mount Sinai because that didn't work very good. There was a blast of a trumpet, there was a sound of words, which was such that those who heard begged that no further word would be spoken to them. He said, You turn God down at Mount Sinai, and God's not going to try that again. In verse 22, he says, I brought you to a new mountain. It's called Mount Zion. It's also called the city of the living God. It's called Heavenly Jerusalem, and there's lots of angels there. And the general assembly of the church is there, and、um, God is there, He's the judge of all, the spirits of righteous men who have been made perfect are there, and Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and the sprinkled blood, it's all there at this mountain. So, so what is this Mount Sinai, this Mount Zion that God has brought the church to? I think it's the experience that we have in worship. When I worship, I worship before the throne of God. John did it in the book of Revelation. He went up to a door in the sky and he just worshiped before the throne. And he saw heavenly Jerusalem and he saw all the angels worshiping there. So when you and I worship, we can do the same thing. We can take the eyes of our heart and we can go into the heavenlies. We can see this heavenly city. And we can join with them as they worship before the throne. So God is offering His voice again. He's offering intimacy again. In verse 25, He says this See to it that you do not refuse Him who is speaking. I mean, that's what they did. The Israelites refused God's voice. 
And God is begging you and I saying, please don't refuse my voice this time. It cost me so much to restore a relationship with you. My, my son Jesus had to die a horrible death on Calvary so I could restore a relationship with you. So from he's begging us to hear his voice and to live out of his voice. And then if you go to the book of Revelation, in chapter 19, verse 7, it says this. That we're engaged to get married. And we're the bride, he's the groom. And at this period of our life, we're engaged. So what's supposed to happen during the engagement period? The thing that's supposed to happen is we get to know each other really well. We spend time together. We talk. We get to know each other's hearts. Make sure that we're compatible with one another. So he said that's what's supposed to be happening right now. And I said, God, we can do that in heaven. He says, no, that's what we're supposed to be doing right here, right now. And so do you see that from Genesis to Revelation, God has always hungered for a people who could hear his voice. And that's That's what the Garden of Eden was all about. And he's still begging for you and me, will you please come and hear my voice? He's saying, I don't want you just living a bunch of laws. I created you to go for a walk with me in the cool of the day. Will you come and hear my voice? And so I said to God, yes. I said, I was tired of living under law. It was heavy, it produced guilt and condemnation. I wasn't full of joy and lightness. And I wanted that. And so I said, Lord, yeah, I'll come and hear your voice. And today God is asking you, will you come hear my voice? Will you make that your number one priority? Will you be a Mary? Who will sit at my feet and hear what I have to say? Because that's what I think is really important. And so now we get a, a chance to respond back to God. And if you want to pray this prayer, say it after me. Lord Jesus, I see the hunger of your heart. You want me to live out of a relationship with you. You created me to live out of a relationship with you. And you sent your son to die so that I could have a relationship with you. And Lord, I'm willing to make that the number one priority of my life. I won't just keep your laws. I'll go beyond that. I will hear your voice. I will be like your son, Jesus. I will do only what I hear the Father speaking and see the Father doing. I will spend time letting you talk to me on a daily basis. I will be a branch grafted into a vine. 
I will abide in Jesus. イエス様の中にとどまります。I will let his life flow out through me. イエス様の命が私の中に流れるようにします。Lord, I make this a priority. 主よ私はこれを最優先事項にします。And Holy Spirit, I ask that you draw me into this lifestyle. このライフスタイルに私を近づけてください。Teach me how to put intimacy with God first in my life. 生活の中で神様との親密さを第一にすることを教えてください。And when I forget to do it, I pray, I ask that you convict me. これを忘れてしまったら私の罪を責めてください。And as you convict me, I will repent. そうしてくだされば私は悔い改めます。そして神様の声を聞きに戻ってきます。神様から言われることの中で生き続けます。Thank you, Lord, that hearing your voice is easy. 主よ、あなたの声を聞くことは簡単ですから感謝します。Thank you that children can do it. 子供でもできますからありがとうございます。Thank you that I can do it. 私にもできますからありがとうございます。Thank you that your sheep hear your voice. あなたの羊があなたの声を聞き分けますからありがとうございます。Lord, I am one of your sheep. 主よ私はあなたの羊です。I can hear your voice. あなたの声が聞けます。I do hear your voice. 実際に聞いています。And I will hear your voice. これからも聞くでしょう。Thank you, Lord. 主よありがとうございます。Amen. Amen. And what I would like you to do is to write a love letter to Jesus. 皆さんにもイエス様へのラブレターを書いてほしいんです。When my wife Patty and I were engaged to get married, 妻のパティと私が婚約した時、We were in Bible college. We And during the summer vacation, we were separated by a five hour drive. And every single day, all summer long, we would write a love letter back and forth to each other. Now, I'm a guy who hated to write, but because I was in love, I wrote a love letter every single day. 私は書くのが嫌いなのに、恋愛中だったので、毎日書いたんです。イエス様にラブレターを書いて返事をもらったことがありますか今日からこれを実行してください。Now, I know you could write a long letter to Jesus. 皆さんはイエス様に長い手紙を書くことができるんです。But I'm going to say, would you limit it to just like one paragraph? しかし、あえて一段落しか書かないでください。And say, Lord, here are some of the reasons I love you so much. つまり、こう書いてください。主よ、今からあなたを愛している理由を書きます。And after one paragraph, let him speak back to you. 一段落書いたら神様に語ってもらいましょう。What I want you to do is fix your eyes on Jesus. イエス様に目を止めて離さないでください。Just picture him there next to you in a comfortable setting. 好きな場面の中であなたとイエス様を一緒に思い浮かべてください。And put a smile on your face. 笑みを浮かべてください。And then just tune to spontaneity. ふとした思いを意識してください。And begin to write down the spontaneous thoughts that are coming back from the Lord. 主から帰ってくるふとした思いを書いていきましょう。He's going to say, I love you too. 主は言われるでしょう。私もお前を愛している。And I'd like you to write a second paragraph where he's talking to you about his love for you. 二つ目の段落では、あなたに対する主の愛について主が語られます。So it's going to be a two-way love letter back and forth. ですから、双方向のラブレターになるんです。And then I'd like you to share some of those love letters with each other in your group. グループ内で皆さんのラブレターを見せ合ってください。Just read what God has spoken to you. 神様が語られたことをそのまま読んでください。It, it's tremendously life-giving to hear the words of the Lord. 主の言葉を聞くのは命の行為です。He said, he said My rhemas are life. 主は言われました。私のレーマは命である。And when we read our journaling and people hear what God is saying, it inspires life in our hearts. And so you'll release the life of God one to the other. And as a person shares their journaling, if you sense it's God, tell them that. And as a person shares their journaling, if you sense it's God, tell them that.
and say, I really believe that was God speaking. 神様が語られていたのだと私は信じますよと。And build up their faith so they're encouraged to do it again. 彼らの信仰を立てください。これを続けたいと思わせてあげましょう。And we'll come back and we'll talk some more about how to hear God's voice. 次のレッスンでは神様の声の聞き方についてさらに詳しくお話ししましょう。今回も2人の兄弟がジャーナルを分かち合ってくれることになっています。We have with us, with us, Nidish and Rajiv. 今回はニーラジさんとラジーブさんです。Welcome. ようこそ。<笑> Good to have you with us. よろしくお願いします。<笑> so, Nidish. ニーラジさん、このジャーナルは初めて書いたものですか Yes, it was. All right. えー、はい、そうです。では、あなたが主にした質問と主の答えを発表してください。Yeah, like、the scene with you, what, uh, what I read said about God speaking to me. で、私は主にした質問と主の答えを発表してください。で、私は主にした質問と主の答えを発表してください。私は主にした質問と主の答えを発表してください。私は主にした質問と主の答えを発表してください。私は主にした質問と主の答えを発表してください。私は主にした質問と主の答えを発表してください。私は主にした質問と主の答えを発表してください。私は主にした質問と主の答えを発表してください。私は主にした質問と主の答えを発表してください。私は主にした質問と主の答えを発表してください。私は主にした質問と主の答えを発表してください。私は主にした質問と主の答えを発表してください。私は主にした質問と主の答えを発表してください。私は主にした質問と主の答えを発表してください。私は主にした質問と主の答えを発表してください。私は主にした質問と主の答えを発表してください。私は主にした質問と主の答えを発表してください。私は主にした質問と主の答えを発表してください。私は主にした質問と主の答えを発表してください。私は主にした質問と主の答えを発表してください。私は主にした質問と主の答えを発表してください。私は主にした質問と主の答えを発表してください。私は主にした質問と主の答えを発表してください。私は主にした質問と主の答えを発表してください。Then I just looked at his face and I started talking to the Lord. <笑>え私はイエス様の顔を見つめ、主と語り始めました。私は自分がどんなにイエス様を愛しているか言いたかったんですが、イエス様が私をどんなに愛してくださっているかを知って驚いてしまいました。So in my love letter, I could just ask Lord, That, what do you see in me that makes you love me so much? 私はこんなにも愛してくださるなんて私はどんな人だとご覧になっているんですかとそのラブレターの中で主に尋ねました。You know everything I do. You have seen all my actions. あなたは知っておられます。私がすることすべてをあなたはご覧になりました。私のすべての行動を。You know all my thoughts. You have seen me in my best and my worst. えー、あなたはご存知です。私のすべての思いをあなたはご覧になりました。私の一番良いところや一番悪いところも。Still you love me. Why? えー、それでも私は愛してくださるのはどうしてですか主は言われました。私はあなたを我が子と呼んだ。あ,あなたは私のしもべではない。私を父と呼びなさい。こうもおっしゃいました。あなたを愛することは天地創造よりも前に私が決めたことです。And I stand on my decisions. 私は自分の決めたことを守る。あなたが何をしようともあなたへの私の愛は変わらない。しかしあなたが私の愛を認めそれを求めていることは私に喜びを与えている。Your love is my life. 私は主に言いました。王主よ、王父よ、あなたの愛は私の人生そのものです。My strength. 私の力です。How much I enjoy being in your arms. あなたの腕の中にいられることは私はどれほど楽しんでいることでしょう。To hear your heartbeat. あなたの心臓の音を聞くために。To feel your warmth. あなたの温かさを感じるために。Can it always remain like this? いつまでもこのままでいられますかすると主は言われました。I have always been here waiting for you to come. 私はずっとここで待っていたあなたが来るのを。And talk to me. 私に話してくれるのを。But now that you are here, えー、だがあ今あなたはここにいる。I want you to stay near me. えー、私の近くにいなさい。Hear my voice. 私の声を聞きなさい。Know my will. 私の御心を知りなさい。Just be around me. 私の近くに、えー、い,いなさい。Then I said, Oh, Daddy, I love you so much. 私は言いました。ああ、お父さん、あなたを心から愛しています
And I cling my arms around his neck. えー、そして主の首に抱きつきました。And we were just looking at the sea of そして、主と私はガリラヤ湖を見つめていました。<笑> And that's how それで終わりです。All right. How about if we all just give him a big hand? えー、盛大な拍手をしてください。<笑> that was fantastic journaling. えー、素晴らしいジャーナルですね。<笑> Thank you for sharing it. えー、読んでくれてありがとうございます。100% God speaking. 100% 神様が、えー、お語りになっている。Amen. Amen. So, Rajiv, is your journaling from your first day also? Yeah, it was my first day.、えー、ラジーブさん、あなたも初日にジャーナルを書いたんですか初日ではありません。All right, so how about if you share what you said to the Lord and what He said back?、えー、では、あなたが主に何と聞いたのか、そして主は何とお答えになったのか教えてください。はい。Hello, Jesus, Father. This is my first love letter. えー、こんにちは、イエス様のお,お父さん。これは初めてのラブレターです。I don't know what to write, but I thank you for giving me this life. えー、何を書いたらいいのかわかりませんが、この命をくださってありがとうございます。Lord, I know you were there in every second of my life. 主、私は知っています。あなたが私の人生のどんな時も一緒にいてくださることを。As my friend, parent, My God. 私の友として、親として、そして神様として。Your love is everlasting. Thank you, for... Thank you Father. えあなたの愛は永遠に続きます。お父さん、ありがとう。Lord, I want to see you. 主あなたは見たいです。I want to tell everyone that the Lord is an awesome God. えみんなに言いたいです。主は素晴らしい神だと。Father, please talk to me. えー、お父さん、どうか私に語ってください。I'm waiting for your reply. えー、あなたの返事を待っています。So when I was writing this letter, I was crying badly. <笑>えー、私はこの手紙を書きながら激しく泣いてしまいました。Suddenly, it like an image came. えー、突然イメージが浮かびました。Thank you, son. Do not cry. 息子よ、泣くのはおよし。I, I have seen you from your childhood. あなたが子供の頃からあなたを見ていた。After hearing that, I was crying badly. <笑>私が激しく泣いているのを見たとき、Don't cry. えー、泣くのはやめなさいと言いました。I have chosen you. 私はあなたを選んだと。To do something for my kingdom. 私の国のために何かをしてもらうために。You, you humble yourself. In me. えー、あなたは私の中で、えー、自分を低くしなさい。And wait in me. 私の中で待っていなさい。えー、これで終わ,り終わりでした。Amen. Let's give him a big hand. All right. 皆さんで拍手を送りましょう。<笑>素晴らしいジャーナルでした。That was fantastic journaling. Thank you for sharing it. 読んでくれてありがとうございます。And so often tears are part of our journaling. えー、このようにジャーナルに涙が伴うことは少なくありません。Because when the Lord speaks into our heart, it touches our heart and, and that produces tears. えー、主が心に語られるとき、主は心に触れてくださり、それが涙を出させるんです。So、we always celebrate tears. ですから、どんな場合も、えー、涙を喜びましょう。And I want to encourage you to take your journaling and your love letter and share it with someone. えー、どうかあなたのジャーナルを、ラブレターを誰かに読んであげてください。And let someone say back to you, that's good, that's God. いいですね、神様ですねと誰かに、えー、言ってもらうんです。And let them build up your faith so you're encouraged to continue journaling. 信仰を立て上げてもらって、えー、励ましてもらったらまたら、またジャンダルを続けましょう。So perhaps before you leave the, your, your service tonight, just, just share your journey with one other person. And I just pray God's blessing upon you this week as you go forth and journal. どうか今週もあなたがジャーナルをつける中、あなたに神様の祝福がありますよう祈ります。And Father, we thank you for what you do. お父様、あなたがしてくださることのゆえにあなたに感謝します。In Jesus' name. イエスの名によって。Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen.